tertiary challenges. Because, um, you know, um, I, we're, we're, and it's consistent with the reval we're doing this year. Um, uh, Mr. Markowitz, I just said in closed session, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, that we have the number one assessor in the state. Um, and so, yeah, I did say that. You had more. <laughs> No, a really strong assessment department, now. And, 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 and I think that, um, you know, and, and this really helps us because we're, we're confident in our valuations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think our value would bring it, and, uh, you know, sort of bring it on and we'll, 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 we'll sit down. If we get it wrong, we'll sit down with you. But more often than not, we're right. And then, you know, we want to take away this, this, this you know, if I talked about before, this sledgehammer hanging over the towns and the municipality. And this is such a wonderful piece of legislation, Mr. Ladner, I, I can't thank you. And the other thing it does is reinforce our early, earlier effort insisting that uh, people are going to challenge, people are going to challenge, yeah, come on up, Mitch. Uh, they're going to challenge um, with Cerciores, they need to file an income and expense statement. And, 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 and so the other thing it does is forces them to do that, and it allows the court to support our town law and, 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 and dismiss the case if they haven't taken the time to simply fill out the uh, expense, income expense, which, which well, obviously is the best. I have one question. There, there are a few typos in the law, and that, you know, I defer to Mr. Latimer as to the significance of that. But one thing that really concerns me is law provides in a few places the proceeding shall be dismissed by the court. If it doesn't say with prejudice, does that mean we just go right back to where we were? Does it have to say with prejudice? Or, or, and if it doesn't say, have we kind of, you know, are we not getting where we want to get? I've got to defer to your counsel to let him. I'm not sure he wants to interpret it on the spot, but I would let him evaluate whether whether that's a, 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 a enough of a concern to make sure this correction. Well, David, let me ask you a question and, and the impact of that, if I could help us understand, help us lay people understand what you would have means. Well, if it says a proceeding shall be dismissed by the court for failure to to follow the prescribed procedures. If it says with prejudice, that means that, that at that point the, the petitioner, the taxpayer, would have to appeal to the next level to have the decision overturned. If it doesn't mean with prejudice, it just means that he gets a second bite at the apple at the same level. And in that case, we really haven't, in my uh, preliminary view, gotten to where we want to go. Well, wouldn't he have to come back with the expense, the expense statement? Uh, well, how could he come back? How could he come back? If the guy dismisses the if the judge dismisses the case, how could he just come back? If it doesn't say with prejudice, he, he may have the opportunity just to just return. Well, there, there might be one unique factor here. And generally, I would agree with uh, Council McElfar, but in in um, in the third cases, there's a deadline, Mitchell, for filing. Uh, there's a deadline. And that, you know, so he if he is dismissed post deadline, he can't go back and refile because he would have missed the deadline. So it's not like he just gets to file again. What Council McGovern was saying is that if it says with prejudice, it really shuts them down. And but because of the the cert claims, you've got to file by a certain date, and if you don't, you you're, you're precluded. So I'm thinking if the court dismissed it, um, the statute isn't told. He, he's still subject to the same limitation, and he couldn't he couldn't file for that year. He can file for the following year, but he could do that anyway. You know, because remember, each of these is, is one year at a time. They file each year on a cert for that particular assessment year. So if they filed for 2005 and this was dismissed in early 2006, um, they can't go back and refile for 05. They can only file for 06. So I'm thinking maybe it really doesn't matter. That's in this in, in, in this instance, it may not matter. I'll just make w one last comment on this legislation. One of the the pieces of it that I think are very valuable to uh, the town and frankly other jurisdictions in the state is the piece that essentially prohibits after the settlement of certiorari litigation uh, the applicant to file the next year so long as we only alter their assessment by the same amount as everybody townwide. One of the the disincentives that currently exist under existing law is that if because the town changes assessments every year to maintain 100% of value, um, every year we're subject to a complaint and subject to a certiorari action. In contrast to communities that have done nothing for 40 years, settle with the litigant, don't change the assessment the following because they don't change anybody's assessment, and they're protected for three years. We're not. So, so this I find that protection that. very valuable to a community such as the town of Rye or Frankly, any t any community that does annual revaluation. Sounds like I'm going to drag you to Albany with these guys. Well, absolutely, and that's why he's the number one assessor in the state. I mean, I just, uh... <laughs>
Uh, in any event, I think since you have other business to do tonight, I'll, I'll leave it uh, with, uh, I will get you copies of the forms to Bishop so that you yep. have that available. Whatever your discussion is tonight, however you decide to handle this, you'll let me know tomorrow. Just have Bishop. Well, right, well while you're here, I, I think, and we'll go uh, from there. Do we, are we prepared to vote on this? I, and I certainly I am. Well, uh, I mean, this is something we've asked for. We'll be right to the Senate number, and I can do it. Yeah. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we add uh, add this uh, resolution to the uh, agenda. Okay. And um, is that a form of a motion? Are you a second on that? I think it's same. I'll second that. Second. second. The law that we voted on. And well, we'll vote on tonight. We'll let Mr. Latimer get going. And listen, the second, second, second part of the double header. We'll talk tomorrow. Mr. Latimer, thank you so much again. I really Thanks appreciate much. it. I'm sorry for the interruption Thanks. to your other presentation. Thanks so much. Have Thank a good you. Night. Thanks. 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 Sorry, uh, we're, Phil. I apologize. Uh, it's just that well, uh, we had a motion that we're adding something to the resolution, right? To so the uh, agenda. Do you want to? Do you want to take it up now, or do you want to? Uh, take yeah, well, we're here, and so. Okay. Uh, all of it. All right, right. What you're going to do then is uh, get a motion to add this to the agenda. So that would be the first second. vote. Second to add it to the agenda. Second. Yeah. Okay. okay. Aye. Aye. Yep. Yes. All right. So that the second motion would be that the the board uh, uh, supports and endorses and author authorizes the town to send to Albany a home rule message in support of Assembly Bill A-10423, Senate Bill 7635, uh, relating to certain procedures regarding changes in assessment uh, in the town of Rye. And so... So moved. Second. Second. No vote. Aye. Aye. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's it. So then, now there, there will be some forms that I think hope should have, if not uh, George or Mr. Silver from Susie's office will get it to us. And then those forms will fill out and the supervisor may have to sign them and, okay. and that's well I put the town what, clerk. I mean, we want to, I mean, well, first of all, I uh, just want to thank the teamwork on this. I mean, Mr. Noto, you know, uh, with the orbs, uh, Mr. Markowitz, you know, we've, we've been talking about this in the board, you know, and I, I want to get this, this, this is transformational transformational in, in the town of Rye. It really is transformational. And if we can get this, this could be the biggest thing we do in four years. Uh, so I want to thank the teamwork of Mr. Noda, Mr. Mark, what's the board uh, for pulling this together. And I don't want to have leave any chance unturned that we get, don't get this done in the next 60 days. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Noto. I apologize, uh, Phil. Thank you so much. I wanted to I want to spend time on this. And I know I see some people here from the Friends of Crawford Park. They may want to comment as well. So... Um, Thank you. Thank you. I'm ready now. I'm sorry, I was in the process of answering your question. Yeah, that's all right. I, I understand. Go the videotape. I understand how you got the answer. Yeah. I do have a question. Um, in terms of the soccer practice, how did you come up with the number 230 cars at a given time? Well, it was in collaboration with Mr. Notnick. Uh, we, the study, as you know, was done over the winter, and we had no way of, the, the best way would be to go out there and look at it, maybe go out there several times and see what, how many cars are parked there, what the usage is, and hope that you get the high, the high time, you know, that it's one of the worst times. But well, it may not be the worst. Thursday, 5 p.m., you can look. You <laughs> okay. get a good idea. Uh, so it was done over the winter. So I relied on Mr. Nowotnik as well as uh, what I know about parks, what I know about various activities in parks. We took the number of activity uh, participants and uh, we used a, a factor that we find in the Institute of Transportation Engineers Generation Manual to determine how many cars are going to be generated. And based on that and the occupancy per car, we could find out how many cars would be generated on average uh, by a specific number of occupants attending a certain function. And it's all categorized. There are many pages in the book. My, my only question and, is that uh, would it consider drop-offs? Well, yeah, there are drop-offs, but what we have to do is when we plan, uh, when people drop off, they drop off uh, one at a time. When they pick up, they're almost there, almost all there at the same time. So we have to plan for the worst time, and if they're there at the same time and have to pull off to the side of the road and park, 